This morning, a new front door for America's biggest city. New York's Penn Station has been around for more than 100 years. The trains at Penn have never stopped running, but what's above them has been built, destroyed, neglected, and now born again. As of this year, January 2021, a stunning new space is open in Midtown Manhattan, carrying with it many of the longtime hopes, dreams, and struggles that have defined not just a city, but a nation. The St. Louis leaving 1255, Westgate track number 12. Penn Station has always been both a place and an idea. Deep in the American's heart is the urge to be on the move. There isn't a train he wouldn't take no matter where it's going. When it was first built at the turn of the last century, it was a monumental project that involved tunneling under two rivers and building an edifice that evoked ancient Rome. Conceived by industrial titans and delivered by workers who sometimes gave their lives, Penn was an enormous moment in American history. Through New York's terminals, serving 10 railroads, move more passengers, commuters, and visitors each year than the combined population of all Western Europe. It also quickly became a star player in American movies. Now cut it out and take that thing off. You're going to Maine, not to Mars. Goodbye, Helen. But over the decades, as the nation moved away from trains toward cars and planes, this architectural masterpiece became a money pit. Headed toward bankruptcy, the Pennsylvania Railroad Company sold the air rights to the property. New York's Pennsylvania Railroad Station has reached the end of the line. And announced their once prized jewel would be torn down. I think that this is a great building and part of our heritage and that it must be preserved. Despite objections, that plan moved forward. The huge granite monument to the age of elegance is falling to the wreckers. New York's Grand Gateway was replaced by a massive modern complex above ground, a new Madison Square Garden. While underground, the new Penn Station would be relegated into what quite plainly would become a dark, dirty shell of itself. A commentator said after its destruction, one entered the city like a god, one scuttles in now like a rat. The greatest city in the world had the crappiest front door in the world. Paul Goldberger is a Pulitzer Prize winning architectural critic. Losing Penn Station in 1963 was what woke a much broader section of New York up to the problem. It woke up New York, it also woke up the rest of the country. Totally. Penn's destruction helped shift the conversation in the United States. There was less impulse to wipe the slate clean, just to make a point, and more emphasis on saving and reviving what was. I think it's a great moment because it's the beginning of putting back Pennsylvania Station. The idea to restore Penn to its former glory had no bigger champion than the man whose name now graces its facade, Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan. America is the land of the second chance, but surely there has been none such of this dimension and this consequence in our time. For decades, the idea sputtered, until now. This week, nearly six decades after the old Penn building was demolished, New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo officially introduced the $1.6 billion Moynihan Train Hall. We build this as a statement of who we are and who we aspire to be. We were given a tour by the architects who designed it. And we tried to reveal as much of the history of the building as possible. Roger Duffy and Colin Coop are with the design firm SOM, which has been working on the project for more than two decades. I grew up in the Midwest, and to come to New York and realize when you arrive at the city that it does not have a good front door of any kind, no matter which mode of transit you use, it's very rewarding to give it something worthy of the city. The, the building was built as a utility building. This was a post office sorting facility, not conceived as a train station. And so we discovered this, uh, what used to be the mail sorting room. The mail sorting room from the historic Farley post office has become the station, right next to the old one. It's a combination of classic and cutting edge. Trusses and columns from the old post office were preserved, but a vast network of parabolic skylights was placed on top of them all of it letting in maximum sunlight. One of the biggest differences here is, I mean, you go into the old Penn Station, you're subterranean, it feels very dark. Here, completely different story. Yeah. William Flynn is the new president of Amtrak, one of the biggest beneficiaries of the new building. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary as Amtrak in 2021. We started operations in 1971. 
And so for 35 years of our life so far, we've been thinking about the station. You started running Amtrak just as the lockdowns began yes. in March. Yes. That is a heck of a time to start when this monumental project is still being finished. Hopefully being finished on time and on budget, yeah. It Hopefully. looks like it. And it was. As of New Year's Day at 6.02 a.m., when the first train rolled out, the nation's newest train hall is fully in operation. Trains are always such a hot topic. People have very passionate feelings they about do. them. What, what, one way or the other, why do you think people should be traveling on trains more? Well, there are, there are a number of reasons, but, but let's just start with the environmental impact. A passenger seat mile on Amtrak is 87% less impact in the environment than traveling by car. 74% less impact in the environment than traveling by, by plane. It's convenient, and it's a great ride. There's almost too much to take in here at first sight, but the giant clock that hangs in the middle of the hall, below that web of skylights, is already a hit. There's avant-garde artwork, including a stunning display of skyscrapers hanging upside down, schedule boards that are actually easy to read, and waiting rooms that actually make you want to wait. All of it a nice reminder that just because we used to build great things doesn't mean we still can't. With COVID, there's not going to be a huge amount of traveling for a while more yet. But in fact, this is the time when you invest for the future. It's in tough times that you build to bring you to a better future. That's what they did. And that's what they did. Wow. Got a lot of questions. So the post office that was there is still there, in, and it's still in operation. They're just not using that big old mail sorting right. room. That's what the train station is. There's also commercial space now. The first and biggest tenant is Facebook. Wow. Yeah, in that, in that new station area. And one of the concerns for Amtrak is that you know, not everybody has access to trains like mm -hmm. we do here mm -hmm. in the Northeast. And so I think what one of their plans for 2021 and beyond is to really expand. They're talking about routes Chicago to Milwaukee to Minneapolis, Raleigh to Charlotte, mm. Atlanta to Birmingham to New Orleans, Las Vegas to Los Angeles. So great way to travel. We'll see. Great station.